Although you have repacked and reassembled the control valve, you must give it a thorough operational check before you commission it. To check it, you will need a zero to thirty pound test gauge and a bleed type reducing regulator. The regulator will provide an input signal. Here is what your test hookup will look like. Consult the valve specification sheet to obtain the input pressure. 3 to 15 psi is the standard input, but some control valves have a bench set. Bench set is used primarily for single seated valves. For instance, the flow against this plug tends to force it upward, so the actuator spring is designed to take the plug force into consideration. But during a bench calibration, there is no flow to oppose the actuator. Hence, the name bench set. To check the stroke of the valve, you might have to apply 3 to 12 PSI rather than 3 to 15 PSI. We will check this valve first. It is a 3 to 15 PSI air to open valve. Apply 3 PSI. Make sure the plug is just touching the seat by loosening and turning the plug stem. Apply greater than 3 PSI. Then screw the plug stem into the actuator stem two more revolutions. The extra two turns will ensure that the valve seats solidly. Lock the stem lock nuts. Apply 15 PSI. Make sure the valve has full travel. Adjust the travel indicator if it doesn't agree with the indicator disc. Stroke the valve several times, stopping at some intermediate value, 9 PSI for example. The valve should always indicate 50% travel with 9 PSI input. If the valve doesn't repeat, it has hysteresis. This can be caused by tight packing. The air close valve is checked in the same manner. However, the valve will seat at 15 PSI rather than 3 PSI. Slowly apply air pressure to the valve. Observe the valve stem travel. Note the input pressure needed to seat the valve. Make adjustments if necessary. You should make the valve barely seat at 15 PSI. Then lower the pressure and screw the plug stem out two revolutions. Then lock the lock nuts. Check the valve for hysteresis, then commission it. Now work exercise three in your workbook. Suppose an operator tells you that a control valve is sticking, stuck, or controlling poorly. This problem is not obvious. You will have to troubleshoot the system. First, ascertain that the instrument signal is reaching the control valve. This controller has 100% output. You would expect the signal at the control valve to be 15 PSI. And you would further expect the valve travel indicator to show 100% valve travel. If the controlling instrument output signal, the signal at the valve, and the valve position do not correspond, there is a malfunction. Ask the operator to bypass the valve. Install a 0 to 30 PSI test gauge at the control valve. Verify that the controller output and valve signal agree. Let's assume the controller output is 100%, but we are receiving only 12 PSI at the valve. Inspect the signal tubing. Look for breaks, leaks, or loose connections. Use Snoop or soapy water to locate leaks. Suppose you didn't find a tubing leak. 
Remove the tubing from the actuator. Dead end the tubing into the test gauge. The signal pressure built up to 15 pounds. This tells you that the leak is in the actuator, not the tubing. Study the cutaway. Where could a leak occur? A ruptured diaphragm would certainly leak. And loose diaphragm case nuts would cause a leak. Use Snoop to find the leak. This leak can be repaired by tightening the case nuts. If air is escaping around the adjusting screw, the diaphragm is probably ruptured and needs replacement. Remove the tubing, then loosen the actuator spring tension by unscrewing the actuator adjusting screw. Failure to release the spring tension can result in a serious accident. Remove the upper diaphragm case, the actuator stem screw, and the diaphragm. Inspect the diaphragm for splits, holes, cracks, or tears. Replace the diaphragm if necessary and reassemble the actuator. Connect the signal input tubing. Apply 3 PSI input. Turn the adjusting screw into the yoke until the actuator starts moving at 3 PSI. Check the stroke by applying 15 PSI. Verify that there are no air leaks. Then commission the valve. Never exceed the maximum signal pressure by 5 PSI. If excessive pressure is applied to the diaphragm, greater than 40 PSI, the diaphragm case may burst. A piston-operated valve may also leak signal air if the input bellows is ruptured. If the bellows is suspect, leak check it. Remove the bellows by taking off the air supply and instrument signal tubing. Then, remove the four screws that hold the bellows in place. And install a new bellows. Now, work exercise four in your workbook. Many times, the proper signal is present at the actuator, but it still will not operate properly. A spring-opposed diaphragm-type actuator will rarely have anything out of order other than the diaphragm. But the piston-operated type actuator, since it is more complex, may have other problems. Assume this piston operator is receiving the proper input, but won't move. First, check the obvious. Make sure you have an air supply between 35 and 100 pounds, and a valid input signal. Now, determine if the problem is in the actuator or the valve. Observe the top and bottom cylinder gauges while you vary the input signal. For a direct acting actuator like this one, the top cylinder pressure should be greater than the bottom cylinder pressure when you increase the input signal. The bottom cylinder pressure should be greater than the top cylinder pressure when you decrease the signal. When the valve reaches the point in its travel that corresponds to the input signal, the pressures will be approximately equal. Now, suppose we increase the instrument signal pressure, but the top cylinder pressure remains at zero. We can definitely conclude that the actuator is in bad order. We have isolated the problem to the actuator, and we can further isolate the problem to the positioner, since it supplies the cylinder pressures. Furthermore, we can isolate the problem to this relay, 
since it is the one that loads the top cylinder. Notice that the flapper is covering the nozzle. This definitely indicates that the relay is at fault. Examine this simplified relay schematic. What would cause zero relay output even though the flapper covers the nozzle? A plugged restriction orifice is a likely cause. A plugged restriction will prevent any back pressure at the nozzle. This is an actual cutaway of the relay. R is the restriction orifice. Also notice the built-in orifice clean-out plunger. By depressing the plunger, you can run the wire through the orifice and remove any obstruction. Now, observe the top cylinder gauge. It indicates that the relay is now functioning properly. Let's review the technique we use to solve the problem. First, what was the problem or symptom? The problem was the valve won't move. The malfunction could be in the valve or the actuator. By observing the cylinder pressure gauges while we vary the input, we determined that the problem was in the actuator. We noticed that the flapper was covering the relay, but the relay had no output. And finally, we solved the problem. Cleaning the orifice was the obvious thing to do first. We could have found and corrected the problem by disassembling the relay, but remember, look for the obvious first. Now, work exercise five in your workbook.